3rd of July, 1905. When I was young, a preacher of the liberation of night tried to convince me that light is tyranny. Maybe they weren't wrong. An old friend told me the stars are dying. One of my crew said they saw one go out. I've seen them grow obsessed with the star's light until I've had to lock them in their cabin for everyone's safety. I should see if I can find the liberation of night again. Maybe they can explain some things. Elizabeth. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, I tried to find the well which the incautious driver wants us to get to, to help them with their brain fungus? <laughs> yeah, um, god that just sounds even more disturbing when I say brain fungus. But uh, yeah, we went up here to the northeast of the LNS Nature Reserve trying to look for the well, because it's supposed to be, I think, to the north north east of New Winchester, if I remember right, which would take it to right about this spot. But couldn't find it. We did find a bunch of horrible stuff. Lots of bees and dangerous ships and a new type of enemy that threw, like, magical papers at us and stuff and uh, a horror over here. Anyway, yeah, uh, our terror is very, very bad. 74%. So, I want to go look for the well again, but... My terror is way too high for that. I'm done with everything I need to do at the nature reserve. So I think for now, I'm just going to head back to New Winchester to try to lower my terror. And probably put some of the stuff I have in the bank. Because while out looking for the well, I've gotten lots of miscellaneous things. Gourds of nectar, some bits of bronze wood, some carefully packed crates of munitions. I don't have any prospects for those things, so I'm just going to store them in the bank until I do. So for now, to New Winchester to try to make everything better. <laughs> I think I might head to Port Avon after New Winchester, because there's lots of things at Port Avon to, like, to go for a calm walk and stuff like that that I think would lower terror. In fact, it's actually the only place I can think of off the top of my head that has things specifically for lowering terror. The question is, can I get home without this getting to 100%? I don't know. I'm pretty sure the, uh, what is it, the peacock wind is blowing through here, blowing in my current direction. So if I tried to go against that the entire way, keeping in mind that terror increases very fast when you're in the peacock wind, then, well, we're going to get to 100%, like, definitely. Which means I think my only way out of here might be to go this way and hope that this, like, hope that there's a way out here? God, I hope so. Let's just go check and make sure the peacock wind is blowing. I see leaves shooting. Oh yeah. God, it would be so incredibly agonizingly slow to go against that wind. Yeah, alright. Hope there's a way out over here. Ooh. I feel like there's like a 50% chance that you encounter a star-maddened explorer when you get one of these things. Two hole, nice. That is a dead end. Do I keep going over? I mean, really, what are my options here? I can't lower my terror here. Should I just go against the damn wind? No. What am I hearing? It's like a thumping noise. Oh, I hear shooting. Also, there's peacock wind over here too, also blowing against me. Anything? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's super close, sure. If I find a new port, that would reduce terror by a lot. I think like 25 or 50, but I'm not gonna count on that. <laughs> All right, you know what? I think I'm going to fight against the peacock wind. Here we go. God, this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. I can just feel the pressure. It's like I want to press the... the f oh, shit. Okay, I don't think they can get me. 
They're stuck in the wind. I can feel the pressure, like I want... Uh oh. Like I want to press the key to go forwards really, really hard. To like strain against it. Okay, rumors of mutiny. This is bad. A pistol is vanished from the armory. Knives are disappearing. The signs of insurrection. Do nothing. What will come, will come. There's your lower the terror by 50. Increase your nightmares thing. Um, yeah, no. Find the parties responsible and dispose of them. Mm. 41% chance. Do it. Yes. Ooh. Ah. Under interrogation, a sallow stoker reveals where the pistol is hidden and who stole it. You seize the culprit and conduct a swift trial. The mutineer spits at you as you condemn her to the skies. Lost one crew. I wonder what would have happened if I failed that. Maybe terror goes up. Okay, I'm actually like halfway through. This isn't quite as slow as I thought it would be. Come on. 80%. Oh, oh, we're almost out. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's lessening. It's lessening. There's... Oh, okay. Please don't come after me. I have no beef with you. I have no beef with you. Okay. Let's grab that real quick. Anything that might lower our terror? Getting their nectar definitely won't lower terror. Let's listen to their death hymn. They say it contains secrets. If you can bear to listen all the way to the end. Success. The sound is memorable, but not notably distressing, until that high C, which makes your teeth itch. Afterwards, are you wiser? Are you stronger? You are not less so. The bees died. You lived. <laughs> okay. 82%. We will make it back without getting to 100%, but I'm scared at what random events we might get. There's fighting over there. I do not care. I am not taking part in that. Nope. 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 Good luck, Dreadnought. Wait, is that Dreadnought fighting the Tackities? The Tackity- Oh, wow. The Tackities are my people. The Dreadnoughts don't attack me, though. That's scary. Holy shit, that Tackity's dead. I'm sorry. I would stop to help, but... Uh, I'm not doing too good myself. They're dead. I should probably go back and loot them, but nope. Oh, whoa. Two Tackety Scouts heading in the direction of the Dreadnought. Do you think they're... Do you think that's just a coincidence? Or are they trying to back up that ship as if they called out an SOS or something? 86%. <laughs> Port report turned in from the Nature Reserve. Back at New Winchester now. Terror is quite a lot lower, but it's still much higher than I'd like. I think... I'm pretty sure above 50% gives you random terror-related events. And I really don't want those. So I do want to go to Port Avon. And try to calm the crew and give them some time off. Little vacation. And when it comes to doing that, there were some new prospects. So I dumped one of my old prospects and got one to deliver verdant seeds to Port Avon. I'm not entirely sure where to get Verdant Seeds, to be honest. I know I've seen them in a lot of places just available at the Bazaar because they were the deal of the day kind of thing, but... I don't think... Do any of these places have them as their export? Like, that's Bronzewood. That's Jumble of Undistinguished Souls. That's Chorister Nectar. Oh. Right. The Nature Reserve is Verdant Seeds. <laughs> you know, I'm probably just not going to bother. It's fine. Like, the quest is to give them three sacks of verdant seeds, and the profit on one sack is like 60 coin or something. So honestly, the profit really wouldn't be that much. 
Anyway, bought some supplies, hull is repaired, hired on one more crew. But before I leave, oh, and I also put the stuff in the bank. Got quite a lot of things, actually. Just waiting for a quest to have somebody want things. I mean, we do have one jumble of undistinguished souls, which they want at Port Prosper, but... Oh, wait, I still haven't found Port Prosper, right? Yeah, I still haven't even found Port Prosper. And anyway, turning in one would be pretty meh. They want three. So, not going to bother with any of that. One thing I do want to do, though, is there's a rather handsome person here, the Fortunate Navigator. Fortunate Navigator is thoroughly examining your engine's pipework. That sounds like a euphemism. Crucial bit, this. Look how it's been maintained. Beautiful. Your stoker beams. That was me. A mid-flight patch, too. Okay, what is your role? 100 sovereigns. First officer. Increases your iron and your establishment. Ah, I already have a first officer, the incognito princess, which gives me hearts and mirrors. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to leave him here. You can, I'm pretty sure you can have, you could just hire on all the officers and just choose which one you want to assign, right? So I could take this person. I could take them and just not use them. Because I think if you get them, then you can do their story stuff, right? You don't have to use them to do the story stuff, I think. As long as they're here, you can click on them and, and try to talk with them. Actually, I looks like I should do some of that. Yeah, you gotta go to the well. Signaler, I need some more port reports, but you looks like I can talk with. But, uh, back to my question before. Do I want to hire this person just for their story stuff? 100 sovereigns really isn't bad. Not that I'm exactly flush with money right now. I've been slowly bleeding out sovereigns, buying so many supplies, trying to go around all these places and not doing any prospects. Hmm. I'm going to take him. Yeah. You won't regret this, Captain. The navigator pumps your hand. He's an... an em Empriel, a people descended from ancient Mongolians and led by the Eagle Khan, whose technology opened the door to the skies. A passing skyfarer tussles the navigator's hair. For luck, the woman says with a grin. The navigator rolls his eyes. She's from my last crew. They thought I brought them luck. I didn't, but I'm still a good hire. Yeah, so next Port Avon, but let's speak with the Incognito Princess first. I need his Sky Stories, Tale of Terror. Yeah, prove oneself a fit confidant. While she seems incapable of discerning between the two, the Incognito Princess seems intrigued by any mention, uh, any mention of Daring Do and Abyssal Horror. Thrilled by her tales, the Princess invites you to her quarters. I have a secret, she says, removing her tiara before donning a second, more expensive tiara. <laughs> I'm Queen Victoria's daughter, she says. I trust your discretion. It's a considerable ask. This must be the captivating princess, the daughter of Victoria who dwells in a miasma of rumors of excess, ranging from red honey to cannibalism. A half-asphyxiated starling has somehow found its way abroad. It flies to her hand. She pets it gently. One is traveling to broaden one's mind before one takes on a new role. It would be a delight to meet with the engineers who keep the eternal ball of perturance tick-tocking away. She smiles. You find yourself outside. So they're bored and they want adventure. Well, we can certainly give them adventure. What about next? Just converse. Why is she traveling? For a change, she says with a smile. After all, I am a princess. The ambition of any princess worthy of the name is not to remain so. Oh, that's... That's it. Huh. That's... Odd? I wonder how we trigger the next part of their story. With all these other people, it's always been something you need. Right? Some port reports or a tale or you need to go to a particular place. But with them, there's absolutely no clue. 
Maybe it'll just happen in time. At some point, they'll pop up and say something. Let's pick up the fortunate navigator. Navigator is rarely in his cabin. He's popular with the crew, and card games and drinking sessions occur spontaneously in his presence. He is, of course, never the instigator. To get to know them, is that a... Oh, I need a caddy of dried tea. We can still talk with them, though. I'm settling in nicely. Thank you, Captain. You have a good crew here. And a sharp one. The Navigator has already visited every crew member at their station. Okay. Well, I think that's it for here. Let's head to Port Avon and try to get our terror down. Hmm, we get the Hour of the Wolf again. I don't know if this is for nightmares or for terror that I'm getting this. Uh, but yeah, it's late, you're alone, doubt preys on you, is this the path you should have taken, etc, etc, I've already read this before. Can either drink, forget what you've seen, or endure. And I'm pretty sure there's a really low chance of passing this. 18%. We're gonna try again, I think we passed it last time. Failure. A tale of terror and gain five terror. Your doubts are hungry tonight. They seize on your past decisions one by one, worrying at each like wolves at a lamb. Okay, we actually, I've read this before too, so I guess I did fail it before. 61%. I am glad we're going to Port Avon. Right, I seem to be in rather extreme luck. I've just arrived at Port Avon. They still need the Verdant Seeds, of course, and guess what they have as a bargain? A sack of Verdant Seeds. So once again, I can just buy this from a shop and then sell it for like three times the profit right across the street. Okay. Well, we're in there a good deal. I might as well get as many as possible, right? Oh, they'd only have three. Perfect. And here you... Here you go? Maybe I need to go to a different screen and then back? Yeah, there we go. It wasn't expecting you to somehow gain verdant seeds on the screen of the prospect. Well, that was easy money. The vicar is almost excessive in his gratitude. Ha! <laughs> I shan't be the laughing stock of the village this year. I shall put even the carpenter's marrows to shame. Thank you for recognizing the importance of our little competition. Increase my welcome, and some experience and some extra money. It's a pretty long thing, isn't it? You get it from the circus, and then you gotta go to Port Avon, and then they tell you we need bee stuff, which is kind of, I guess, sort of in the north. There's no specific spot you go to. They're kind of all over the place. Gotta find that, and then come back to Port Avon, then I assume back to the circus. The reclusive carpenter bids you deliver the material outside his workshop and return in two days. After the time has passed, just outside your locomotive, you find the magician's equipment boxed and ready for transport. The carpenter is nowhere to be seen. Weird. Right, so we need to lower our stress. A quiet day in Port Avon. A pleasant breeze wafts through the village, making even its pricklier residents relax their guard and welcome guests. Ah, cheap fuel, right, this stuff. Well, I'm okay on fuel. Let's just try to get our terror down. Let's play a round of cricket. One of the teams is a person down. A rare chance to join the games. Went down by like, maybe 10%? Nobody seems to remember how long this game has been going on. Just that the score is now almost a formality. You play your part and points are scored. Yet by the time you leave, it's no closer to an end. Nobody seems to mind. It is, after all, cricket. Oh, is that... Is that all I could do? To lower stress? Uh, let's share exotic gossip with the locals. We've done that before. Yep. I hear your conversations about a London scandal. Oh no, I can do other stuff. That's just the dock. Right. Let's go to the village green. Take a relaxing stroll or attend a service at the church. Haven't attended the church before. Let's try that. 
A sermon. The vicar's voice rises and falls like a tide. His parishioners struggle to stay awake. <laughs> Today, his sermon concerns Matthew chapter 4 and the devil tempting Christ in the wilderness. One vision of heaven. Oh, well, that's good. Didn't do anything for terror, though. Let's take a stroll. Went, oh, went from 54 to 51. 3%? Decrease? That's not much. Above, a golden nebula is fierce in the sky. Amber light dapples the curving lanes. Locals nod to you cautiously as you pass. A light drizzle of silver rain brushes the village. Its beads are bright and tiny as pinheads. I have a hunch that maybe the more you explore around in one sitting, maybe you get return, uh, reduced return on the, the amount of terror that gets reduced. If that makes any sense. Like maybe they try to stop you from kind of just farming terror reduction all at one time. But this is new. Visit the allotments. In fenced plots across Port Avon, grizzled horticulturalists tame the rampant vegetation of the Reach. Whoa. 100% chance of success with my mirrors. Sure. The contents of the allotments are unlike familiar vegetables, but it helps to look for the similarities. That bulbous squash is too lumpen, too spotty, too purple to be a marrow. But it is more like a marrow than it is like a cucumber. The little fruits clumped on the serpentine vines are certainly not cherries. Cherries are not hairy. But they are closer to cherries than they are to, say, kiwi fruit. Or otters. Call it a marrow, then. Call them cherries. It helps somehow. The gardener, mistaking your cognitive reshuffle for hunger, offers you a handful of freshly dug, tapered, tiger-striped roots. Let's call them carrots. Oh, I guess the carrots are the uncanny specimen that we just gained. Okay. Oh, that's cool. We can keep doing stuff here, but it's different things. Sit with the eel fishers. Uh, we, um, hmm. I shouldn't, though, because it's wearing out my welcome. I need to get my terror down. So, let's go to the Nowhere Inn. Get drunk, head upstairs. Oh, right, we could turn in one of our trophies that we got. Oh, we have two. This, we got the scribe spinster right. That was a thing that shot, like, papers at us. Oh, they even give you some reward just for the trophy. I thought they would only just give you membership once you got all three, and that would be the only reward. The stout veteran refuses to touch it. In my day, we never had nonsense like this, you know? It was all marsh wolves and ambulatory fungus. <laughs> Good sensible hunting. I mean, what even is this? I feel like it's watching me, and it doesn't even have any eyes. Jenkins, put it somewhere I won't see it. Ah, oh, the good old days of ambulatory fungus. Hmm. Hope the fungus in the incautious driver's brain doesn't become ambulatory and walk out their ears. Of course, to be trophy. Stout veteran looks deep into its eyes. Not so tough now, are we? He crows. Jenkins, fetch the nails. Do I want to read speculative fiction? I've already read that once. What about this? Oh no, the Cyclopean ruins aren't going to reduce stress. That's just to go mining. Sure, let's read speculative fiction. It went down like 4%? Yeah, that seems like it's not reducing by very much. Might still be worth it, though. Um, okay, so last time we read... What was it? Bones in the Well, yes. And it was cheesy as hell. Let's read something else. A Corpse at the Window. Amelia looked through the glass. Her sister had returned. In one hand, she held a necklace of muddy diamonds dug from a doyen's grave. From the other dangled the corpse of a doe. Around Catherine's stretched throat, Amelia could still see the rope marks. White and neat as a vicar's collar. Okay, I mean, I could just keep doing that, I suppose. What about back at the village screen? 
Take another relaxing stroll. Let's see how much that does. 47 down to 44. Yeah, that's not good. What is my welcome now? Does it say? I can't actually find where it says the amount of welcome that I have. I thought it would be here in possessions, but it's not. Only thing is the port report for Port Avon. It's definitely not here unless the icon is different, but why the hell would it be? It's this blue thing. It's very easy to spot. But it was eight at one point, so I probably have at least like three left. Even if it's inefficient, and I'm not sure that it is, but I suspect it is, I still want to do some stuff a, a bit more just to get a extra 10% down on my terror or something like that. So let's read some different bits of fiction. Hmm. I want to read all the creepy ones. Corpse at the window, bones in the well, devil's confession. His companion's hooves thumped on the crimson carpet. The corridor was long and lined with doors, each with a brass knob. He opened one. The room behind was filled from floor to ceiling with bottled souls. He tried another, the same. We've never found a use for them, the devil admitted. Reads more fiction. Yeah, it's going down by 4%. I mean, it's not terrible. What else might be creepy? The Parsons cook pot sounds like cannibalism. Judging by that little description here. The ladle steamed. Another portion? Asked the Parsons' wife. Why not? Constance replied and raised her bowl. The Parsons' crockery was old and pretty. His chair was comfortable. His house needed only modest improvements, mostly in the area of the curtains. Perhaps he would be missed, but no one would ever find his remains. As long as Constance finished the stew. <laughs> yeah, 32%. I think that's good. So we'll just read this last one. Done that, done that, done that. This is about politics. Eyes of Heaven. Thrilling tale of discovery and danger in a sky. Heretofore unknown, sure. They burned the charts. For what use were they now? The incorrigible thundered through an empty, unnamed heaven blown with a frost wind. Ahead, a new sun blazed, the size of a penny through the forward windows. There was a long way to go. That could be me one day. A new sun. Ooh, got a homestead. I'm just on my way to the circus to turn in the magician's stuff. Right next to Port Avon, haven't gone far. I remember I wanted to find a homestead to see if I can find ants. Remember I needed ants for the research at the nature reserve? And it mentioned something about finding ants at homesteads? Like that's when they were first reported existing? Trade them some of your supplies. One supply for bronze wood. That's an amazing deal. Bronze wood at full price. Uh, oh no, I'm thinking of the price they paid when they were paying for a prospect. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what the price of bronze wood is. I think it's like 170 per piece of wood get it, if you get it from the circus where they're exported. And supplies are, of course, 40 for each one, so this is a really good deal. Ooh, trade the munitions. I got a bunch in the bank. Uh, yeah, supplies for bronze wood, absolutely. They're timberers, saving twigs from the great bronze woods of the Reach and selling them to passing traders. They offer several gleaming logs in return for your supplies. Uh, right, yeah, there should be some new ledger stuff, right? Let's read it. Captain Singh. There's a column for miscellaneous notes. The captain writes feverishly of a light that danced at some distance before them. After some hours following it, it abruptly grew, getting brighter as it did. Then, nothing. Just gone. Vision of the heavens. Ooh, something to mine behind Cuddlescomb. I love having the mining drill on board. Barrel of Unseasoned Hours. Oh, I actually needed to turn five of those in to the circus, which is where I'm going right now. That's absolutely perfect. 
at the circus now. Just got a port report. Let's go ahead and turn in our one barrel of unseasoned hours for 155. 1100 sovereigns. Feels good to be back up there. I, I think I at one point was down to like 500 and something. Just from burning supplies and fuel and repairs and stuff like that from all my exploring. And we've got some bargains for undistinguished souls. I think I'll buy all those up. And just store them. Right, they still need to be delivered to Port Prosper, right? Yeah. Still don't know where that is. Right, so let's turn the thing in to the magician. Go behind the tents, I think. Yeah, deliver the magician's repaired equipment. His friend in Port Avon has fixed the delicate machines. They're ready to be used again. The magician inspects his equipment as thoroughly as a gunnery officer would their cannons before a long-awaited engagement. When he's satisfied that the panels do shut properly and silently, he breathes a sigh of relief. It's been some time since I've been able to do anything worth a damn. I remember, back in those days, the people my performances would attract. His glance catches on an old poster of himself. He requests you leave him alone to practice. 100 sovereigns, 500 experience, and 2 salon stewed gossip. Nice, I can use that for more, more welcome at Port Avon. I think I talked with a lot of these people and they didn't really have much to say. Like, we talked to the headstrong strong woman just a little bit and then, yeah, it didn't really lead anywhere. What if we talk to the magician, magician again? Do they have anything new to say? Yeah, yeah, this is new. This, it sounds like they're talking about what happened after they used their new repaired equipment. He smiles like a child who has just seen something magical. Did you hear how they gasped? He asks, mimicking the audience with exaggerated features of surprise. His smile widens, and he takes another puff. It's been a long time since I've heard that. Aw, glad I could help him out. Anybody else need some help? I guess, see what the ringmaster has to say. Yeah, we've already read this before. Oh, right. Reclaim the acrobat's twin. Purchase costumes for the clown. Post flyers for the strong woman. I suppose, let's put up posters for the strong woman. Six of rats. Ideally, the strong woman's act is to lift unusual objects brought in by the crowd. The problem is, no one knows they're supposed to bring something. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. The ringmaster leans under his desk to pick up a fat bundle of posters. He drops them with a thud. We need these slapped all across the Leadbetter and Stainrod Nature Reserve and New Winchester. Oh yeah, I can do that. C can I take multiple quests at the same time, actually? Like, can I go back there and just get them all? Uh, doesn't look like it? No, okay, you can only have one at one time. Fair enough. Oh, I just did the new arrivals at the circus thing, which I know we've done before, not thinking anything new would happen. This description's the same, but it did actually reduce my terror by a lot. By like 10%? Can you just keep doing that? No. No, the option disappeared for the newcomers. Okay. Well, I, now I know to do that anytime I, I see it. That's a massive terror reduction. Okay, let's head back to New Winchester, turn in our port reports, dump off some of our stuff, and distribute some flyers for the headstrong strong woman. <laughs>